Welcome to part seven of our video series. In this video, I'll walk you through, maybe I should move my mic closer. Uh, I'll walk you through the configuration of our machine catalogs and delivery groups, as well as go through some, some overall configurations of how we can publish those applications, as well as those desktops. So first thing first, let's jump down to our hosting um, section here under our studio console. So if you don't have studio open yet, just open that up on your de your delivery controller, and that was a hiccup. Um, and we're gonna create a hosting connection. So you might be asking yourself, Ryan, why do we need to even create a hosting connection? Well, we need to create a hosting connection in order to do power management activities and to utilize machine creation services for our image management solution. So essentially it's gonna communicate with the hardware um, level of, of your host. So here you'll, if you're using Zen server, this is gonna be great for you, uh, but it, it's the same idea if you're using Hyper-V or if you're using, um, why am I blanking, uh, ESXi. So here you'll see I have my IP.11 there. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is put the address of your host, so for me, it's dot 11. Ooh, let's see if I remember what I have for my username and password, and I'll call this Zen Server Left. Yes, my naming conventions are amazing, but it does help in my own home lab. It is my left host. That's how I name that there. Um, so you can use shared storage. You can use local storage. It's really up to you and how your layout's configured. I'm going to choose local storage on mine. Next, um, call this send server left and zero for network zero. I'm pretty sure that's the right network I want to use. Pretty, pretty sure. Um, but we'll find out. Uh, GPU type. Sure, why not? Even though I don't have a GPU. And let's choose finish. So that should create our first hosting connection here. Um, let's add a second one just so you can see what that looks like. I'm not gonna add all four of my hosts because I'll just take up too much time. And of course it's dot 12, I should have known that. Let's uh, add a connection here. 192.168.0.12 root. Somehow I guessed my password right. I'm very surprised by that actually. Call that in server three because that's my third host I, I purchased. I'm gonna do local storage to the hypervisor. I'm gonna choose next. And let's call this Zen server three and zero for network zero. And finish. So we should have both, both of our hosting connections here. And you know what? I probably should have remembered exactly. I think we use this one and this one. So we should be good from a hosting connection perspective. So let's jump up to machine catalogs. Once you've created your, your hosting connection to, to your various hosts. And the way I like to explain machine catalogs is they're essentially your grouping of machines based on operating system. So if you have let's say a Windows 2012 R2 pool and a Windows 7 pool, you'd have two different machine catalogs, each with the machines under that pool. So we're gonna go ahead and on the right, we're gonna create a machine catalog. We'll choose next. Let's do server first, why not? And we could use machine creation services here. So essentially what this will do, You'll see we have an option for power manage. If I choose, let's say, um, my host I'm on right now, my Zen app server will show up here. I can choose that. I can assign the network to it. And I can create and provision an X amount of machines. So if I wanted five machines, I can do that. I can choose a RAM. I can definitely use um, machine creation services. Um, the, the later version where we're able to cache uh, our writes into memory, which is just going to improve overall performance. And what this will do is it'll automatically provision these for me. It'll take a snapshot of that virtual app server 
and provision machines from that snapshot and even create actually I can show you if I assign some memory to that it'll create the, the machine names based on the, the naming scheme I created so I don't have room on my host because this is a lab environment so I'm not going to actually create machines via machine creation services I'm going to say that are not power managed and I'm just going to publish this one virtual app server but if you have questions about how machine creation services work or you maybe even want a video that explains that process please let me know by writing in the comment box below any feedback is highly appreciated I want to create content that my viewers are interested in seeing so so happy to help out there let's go ahead let's go through this process um, let's add our computer and I don't remember the name, so hopefully, yeah, this, is, this looks right, grind-xa. So find your computer name, choose next, and I will call this Windows 2012 R2. And choose finish. And what this is going to do, this is going to create our machine catalog with our machine located here. So we're going to want to do the same thing with our virtual desktop. So again, not machines that are not power managed. It's the same process as before. It's gonna be a little different. Here we have the option of giving users a random desktop every time they log in, or giving them a static desktop. The differences between is when we have a random desktop, a pool desktop, every time I connect into my Citrix environment, I might be landing on a different desktop. So I might be, if you hear squeaking in the background, my dog's playing with his toy. Mickey, hey, come here. Um, but so again, pool desktop, sorry, distracted there. Um, every time I log in, I'm gonna get a new desktop. So if I'm on desktop one today, two hours later when I reconnect, I might be on desktop two. Whereas a static desktop, as soon as I log in, that desktop's mine. And that will always be dedicated to mine. There's pros and cons of each. A static desktop will be used more likely if you're actually gonna do some customization and allow users to, this is what he was chewing. Uh, so allow users to actually um, make installations, um, cut, do more customizations, whereas a random desktop will wipe itself every single time a user disconnects and, and re-logs in. So I'm going to do a random desktop and we're going to add our computer here and I do not remember the host name for the life of me on this desktop so let's take a look at that and do 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 let's give it a second here while it's logging me in so again once we have our machine catalogs created it doesn't do anything, right? We haven't actually published any resources out. That's when we have to go in and actually configure what we call delivery groups, which is how we assign our machines to our users and our resources to our users. Um, let's find what this hosting is. I should have known, grind-master. Ah, maybe that is not the one I installed my VDA on. Let's try number two. Actually, you know what? Let's just do this. And let's see if we find it here. This one's probably it. Brian Dash Win 10. Choose OK. Next. And we'll call this one Windows 10. Since I'm publishing a Windows 10 desktop with this machine catalog. And all right, so we got both of our machine catalogs created. Let's jump down to delivery groups and we're gonna create a delivery group. So just do next. Let's do our Windows 2012 R2 first. And you'll see I can choose a number of machines and here we can see the list of the number of machines that are associated to this machine catalog. So you could have multiple delivery groups configured to point to the same machine catalog. For example, if I have users in HR and I have some users in sales and I'm utilizing the same app, app server pool but those users need different resources because they use different applications in, the, in their day-to-day -day job. I might have 
one machine catalog for my Windows 2012 R2 pool, but I might have two delivery groups that are sharing resources from that machine catalog, and maybe each of them have, have three virtual app servers assigned to that delivery group. So hopefully that makes sense. Here we can choose what users we're gonna give access to this delivery group. So again, if I had HR, I could type HR here. If I had a Citrix group, I can type Citrix here. Um, this one will allow any authenticated users to use this delivery group, which is what I'll choose for the sake of this video series. Um, under applications, we're gonna choose add from start menu. And here, if your VDA is able to communicate appropriately to your delivery controller, you should see all of your applications populate here automatically. So I can go in, I can publish um, calculator, I can publish Chrome, Notepad, Plus Plus, um, Windows Media Player if I wanted to, which I actually don't. Let's choose Paint here, and let's choose OK. So you'll see here I have my applications. I can publish this out as a desktop as well. So this would be a hosted shared desktop. And the way I always like to explain this when I'm talking about Citrix to, to my partners or my customers is that a hosted shared desktop is very similar to a virtual desktop, except it's a multi-tenant desktop. Meaning if I connect and you connect at the same time, Rather than us having our own individual VDI, we're able to share the resources of that application server. So that CPU and RAM, we're sharing in the back end. So not only does this improve our overall scalability, but it's also going to reduce our cost because we need less hardware to, to manage users. And it's going to make, in general, management easier because now we have less servers to manage in our virtual environment. So you, think you can have a whole lot less application servers and you would need VDIs because a VDI is a one-to-one -one relationship. A hosted shared desktop is potentially a 20 to one relationship depending on how we size that. So I would say if you are looking at virtual apps versus virtual desktops, the real reason you'd ever move to a virtual desktop environment is one, application compatibility if you have to run an application on a desktop operating system, or two, you need the hardware, you need the, the GPU, the high graphics for applications like, like an AutoCAD or something along those lines where you, need to, where you need dedicated GPU to that machine. Or of course, there is number three, or if you need customization on your VDI, which at that point, why even go with VDI, just have a desktop. Um, that's that's gonna, gonna typically be your third option. So I'll choose okay here just so you can see what that looks like. We'll choose next and again we'll call this I don't know um, let's let's say this is my finance team. Of course everybody has access to this but just so you have a better idea. And we'll create another delivery group as well. So we'll choose a Windows 10 this time. Again, we're gonna allow anyone to have access to this. We're gonna add, app. actually we could add an application from the start menu. And it does not like my operating system. So which one did I use? That's a question. Let me double check. It's probably this one here. Monica 110. So this is my fiance's machine that I created for her. So let's recreate that machine catalog really quick. Desktop OS. Not power managed. Random. Add computers. And let's we'll see if we see it this time. There it is. Um, Windows. Windows 10 new and finish and let's try that again sorry about that guys at least you get to see me create a machine catalog for the second time but as i'm sure most of you are aware technology never goes right the very first time so here and now hopefully we see we still don't see applications 
Why? All right, um, let's just pretend we do. Um, here we can also publish a desktop. We can call this Windows 10. Pretend this is working because you will still see it. Um, we can add a description if we want to. Um, you can add tags to it, but we'll just keep it simple for now. And we'll call this, I don't know, HR desktops. And we'll choose finish. And if all goes well, if we browse now to our storefront server, which actually, let me do that on this Windows 10 box here. I think it's cleaner when we access this from a desktop operating system. Citrix.ryan.local slash Citrix slash store web. Uh, okay, I'm not sure why we're getting a certificate error, but that's fine. All right, let's log in and we should see some resources now as soon as we log into this. So there you go. We can favorite some resources here. We can favorite our desktops if we want to. We can go ahead and launch them. Let's say we want to open it. I don't know if I have receiver installed on this. Yeah, so I don't have receiver installed on this, but it looks like it's opening okay without much difficulty. So pretty straightforward to publish resources um, in the following videos. Let, let's go through um, a little bit of, of policies and some other settings that are here. Uh, maybe how we can create different groups within our configuration console. And we still need to hit the, the networking piece with our Netscaler for load balancing and remote access. But again, if, if there's anything in particular my audience, you guys were looking to, to see as we go through this install or even a one-off video, please let me know. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Otherwise, thanks everyone. Hope you enjoyed this video.